What was it about the billionaire amateur space enthusiast that meant he was selected to become the first non-professional astronaut to carry out a commercial spacewalk? At 11.52 this morning, 41-year-old Jarrett Isaacman floated out into space, moving at 18,000 miles an hour to have a bit of a gander at planet Earth. Dr Christopher Pattinson is a space science expert from the Institute of Cosmology and Gravitation at the University of Portsmouth. Thank you very much indeed for coming on, Doctor. Um, what do you make of this first commercial spacewalk? I think it's a, a very exciting step for us. Uh, until now, every astronaut has been government funded or every mission has been government funded. And now we have a, a private person and a, a private company that have launched uh, a crew into space and, and some of them have stepped outside the capsule for the first time. So I think with a view to eventually landing on the moon and Mars, we have to be able to get out of these capsules once we get to the places. So I think this is an exciting step. Um, it's going to be very, very expensive to do commercially though, isn't it? And it's probably going to be very reliant on the odd billionaire fancying a trip up there. I think, well, yes, it is very expensive. And at the moment, as you say, we're relying on people like Jared Isaacman to fund these missions because I don't think it would have happened without him. No. Um, but I, I try and look at the positives of this as that it, it has happened. It's a big step forward for us uh, as as mankind and as for SpaceX to test their capabilities of doing these things and, and testing their new spacesuits. So I'm trying to look at the positives of that rather than... Uh, the, the the fact that it's only billionaires at the moment. What was paying for this. yes, quite. What was new about the spacesuit? That's a great question. Uh, I don't know the specifics of the old spacesuit, to be honest with you. But it's the old ones. I don't think were safe to go out in the vacuum of space. Uh, so so far, SpaceX has only launched people uh, in orbit and to the International Space Station. So they never left the vehicle. They never went out into the vacuum of space. And this new one has a lot of uh, like safety features and. Uh, the, the pressure it can it can reach inside the suit. It's got a new heads-up display. Uh, it's got new radiation protection. So that sort of thing is what's new on this suit. We've seen, um, to an extent, the commercialization of space in that people can go up in planes on what's called, I think they're called vomit comets, um, where you do parabolic flying and you can experience zero gravity. There's been some talk about using, whether it's Amazon's craft and there was Virgin Galactic for a bit. It, it never quite happened. Do you think now, Christopher, this shows the path forward for the commercialization of spaceflight? I think it's a step towards it. I think, I mean, the Vomit Comet never actually went to space. It was no, just no, sort of no, a, true. Yeah. It yeah. dropped fast enough that it felt yeah. like you were in, in zero gravity. But this, I mean, it would still be incredibly expensive. And I think, I don't know if SpaceX is taking orders yet, but I think it, it's more the step to getting to the moon or to Mars, which is their ultimate aim. And I think this is, is, is it's not the final step, of course, but it's, it's an important first step towards those sorts of things. And I suspect in 10, 15, 20 years, We'll be seeing a lot more people taking their taking their selfies outside of out of the capsules and wow. and looking down on Earth like that. Um, I, we did uh, an interview a couple of years ago with uh, an incredible woman who was working on building a structure that could be assembled in orbit and sort of float around the Earth that people perhaps could go and live on or do science experiments on uh, creation of sort of space labs, as it were. Do you think that is with the commercial entity that can provide the travel to and from Earth to the whatever lab is created, do you think that's going to be possible in the next 10 years? I think it's absolutely possible. Whether it's in 10 years, I think that's the, the deadlines like that always slip for both government and commercial things. So, I mean, what you've described is essentially the International Space Station. Yeah, and I think yeah. um, these private companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, Boeing, all have plans in some stage of development to develop a new space station. And I think the ISS is only at the moment scheduled to be up there for another five or six years. And I think once that is decommissioned, then I think it will be these private companies that have the sort of stations and people like NASA will end up renting from them to send people to space rather than building a new ISS or, or something similar. Very good to talk to you. Thanks for coming on, Dr. Christopher Pattinson, space science expert from the Institute of Cosmology and Gravitation at the University of Portsmouth. You know you can on, a, on the right night at the right time, see the International Space Station move slowly across the sky. It looks like a, a star that is moving, but it's, it's the ISS that's moving across. Do you think in 10 years' time, if you've got, once that's decommissioned, and you're standing there with a telescope in your back garden, and you just you peer through the telescope at the object that is moving across the sky at night, and as you zoom in with the telescope, it just reads Amazon on the bottom. <laughs> Emirates as it's whizzing by. It's got to have the branding on it if it's a commercial entity.